So uh, yes, to finish the day, it will be about, so the topic of my presentation will be a bit different than the ones which were presented before. And I chose a, a title which was a bit provocative since actually, so I have left academia and joined a, a, a company basically. And actually it's a semiconductor company as you can imagine from the title. And we are a few people working there actually with first principle simulation in order to help and to support the experimental counterparts in order to develop the future technology of uh, semiconductor. Okay, so to begin with, most of you may not be aware of what is IMEX. So it's uh, that's just uh, an introductory slide about the company. So it's an international company which basically search, serves sorry, as a research and development hub for nano and digital technology, and which employs more than 4,500 people worldwide. And so you have different offices. I think the map is a bit outdated, but that's not important. So you see it's an international company, but the important part is that the headquarters is actually located in Belgium, but not in Louvain-la-Neuve, unfortunately, it's the Flemish counterpart of the city, which is Leuven, which is in the Flemish part of the country. And you can see on the right, basically, that's just a, a little picture. So on the right, you have the tower, the IMEC tower, where it's basically the office. And on the left, the Gigantic building is basically for most part clean rooms in order to create basically silicon wafers and other technologies. Okay, so what's the goal of IMEC? So it's actually to design the next generation of uh, transistor and in general of uh, silicon, of oh, sorry, of semiconductor technologies. So on a chip, you can find different elements. This is just relatively a simple overview of the different parts that you can have, but you have memories that are involved. You have uh, the transistor, of course, based of silicon. And of course, as you can, you probably all are aware of the Moore's law. The objective is to increase the density of transistor in the chip. So to reduce the dimensionality, basically. And so there are some problems that comes into play when you reduce the dimensionality of silicon transistor. And so there's an interest as well to go to 2D materials and to have transistor based on such device. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of problems that arise when you move to this kind of system. You have also other problems that comes into play, which may look a bit silly from the outside, but you have problem with the interconnect. So the metallization line that binds the different parts together with the reduction of dimensionality, there are, there are new problems that comes into play. So uh, from the ab initio, I should say atomistic to be more precise part, we actually, are put into that and to provide support for different parts of this uh, technology. So there is a part, I, I will not go into too many details now about that, but uh, for the lithography part, but we are also involved in the description of the logic part of the memory in order to provide uh, an understanding of the device from an ab initio point of view and also to identify new material. And I will have a few slides on this specific topic because that's one of the most important part of our work for, uh, so to find the optimal material for a given application, but we are also involved in other part, but I will not go into too many details about that. Okay, about materials. The first, uh, it's not the first generation, but in 1970, basically transistors were made of 10-ish uh, elements from the periodic table. But through the years, more and more elements up to reaching for today for the CMOS uh, technology have been added to basically the, the silicon or the semiconductor technologies. The only elements that are missing, and I'm sorry, Mark, is all the radioactive elements. That's probably the only part of the periodic table, table sorry, that we are missing. Uh, the complexity is that it leads to a really large number of possible materials that you have to investigate and to, to find the optimal material. And of course, you have to consider different phases. And so uh, basically experiment, so we have access to all these elements and experimentalists ask us, and that's the next slide, okay, I would like to find a material with a high dielectric constant. Can you find one? And with, of course, other criteria that have to be uh, taken into account, ferroelectrics material and things like this. Uh, and there is also another part that comes into play because of the reduction of dimensionality is that you have a lot of problem of interfaces that comes into play as well. And so you, it's not only material that you have to look at, but basically interfaces between uh, the materials. And this is also something I should mention that's a bit different from the ab initio community generally is that 
uh, semiconductor companies really like amorphous materials. So this is something that has to be taken into account and to be investigated as well. Uh, so part of the challenges about this, uh, this part is, of course, that there have been a lot of work that has already been published on the topic. For If you, you are looking for IK, dielectric constant material, oh, sorry, a high dielectric constant material, there are a lot of reports about that, but there's not always a clear benchmark about that. And also the process that has been used to synthesize such system may not be applied uh, in a large scale fashion. So uh, this is also something which is really critical for some application. And so sometimes you cannot refer to literature because basically the process cannot be used at large scale. So this is a bit where one part of our job, I should put all the figures on the slide at the same time, that will be easier, is to make a first screening. So we are given a problem and we have to identify basically what are the functional materials uh, after uh, data mining and some ab initio calculations. So in this case, it was for a semiconductor, an amorphous semiconductors to identify the most important for promising material and then they were synthesized in the lab. So that's basically, and simplest, I will give you an example later, but the same, a simple view of uh, the material identification with that we are tasked with. Another important part, which is probably a bit different than uh, the ab initio community is generally used to, is actually multi-scale modeling. Actually, uh, that's for, from a, the company point of view, of course, like having ab initio result is not really what is important, is that they have a, syst uh, a system, uh, a device where they have the electrical measurements and they see that it's not working and they want to understand why. And for to do so, they, they require, but they use different type of modeling of this kind of structure. So there are things like compact modeling, but there's also finite elements. You have the resolution the model for software to solve the Boltzmann transport equation for it and this kind of things. But all this, mod, for, especially for compact model, this model generally lacks physics. And so that's actually where uh, first principle calculations comes into play, is to be able to feed such kind of model based on first principle calculations. So in IMEC, basically, we are like at the, and that's why I said a bit provocatively that we are the backbone for the future development of technology is that this complex model are actually fed with uh, first principle calculation. Uh, this is just to give you an, an idea of where I've been issue comes to feed such kind of model. So there is some parts which are related to surface chemistry, but I will not go into details, but uh, for uh, like to identify the uh, precursors and also to come into uh, lithography, but let's keep that for this presentation. There is the part which is related to transport where we can feed such kind of uh, bone span transport solver with uh, electron phonon and phonon phonon coupling elements the relax the scattering rate should i say to be precise and the carrier velocities and there's also an interest to feed finite elements modeling with mechanical properties that are computed ab initio and also uh, for ballistic transport so any gf uh, with uh, electronic properties and that's basically the other part so there's two main axes if i could call it like this so there's the material discovery and then the multi-scale modeling where we serve to feed more advanced model. So just to give you an example of uh, an application, if I could call it like this, of material uh, of what we are doing, is to select uh, metals for uh, reduced dimensionality interconnect. So basically, the problem is synthesized on the left. I hope it's not cut for on your screen. But basically, when you consider a material and you reduce the dimensionality of the material that you are looking at, basically, it's not a constant. You have variation of this resistivity um, with uh, the dimension. And actually, I, I will skip one step further, but for, because it's important. So you can see on the right, basically, for copper, which is, which show the lowest resistivity, at, basically, at the bulk phase, the conductivity increases much quicker than for other metal. And so, actually, for the metallization line, where you want to have a good electrical conductivity, it's important to, to have the material with the lowest resistivity. And so basically there are other materials which we had to identify previous and so that's why I should only show the first picture in the beginning, 
we are able to identify ab initio the most promising materials. So not only single metals, but also binaries and tenaries, metallic compounds. And basically, we feed the uh, experimental or experimental colleagues with all our insights. They make a first experimental measurement. Then they have also, there is also a question. There, are, oh, sorry, there is also a question of processing that comes into play. So all the metal cannot be processed easily. So they have to discard some material on the way. And at the end, they have to develop the process in order to uh, to finally have something to metallize on the large scale. Uh, large scale with com uh, with commas. No, uh, I does yeah with commas in for the experimental process. And so that's a bit the synthesis on the slide is that we can come from we come from something I should say the Abini show where basically there was four thousand possibilities which are impossible to investigate experimentally. And for initial, we are able to select the most promising one and say, okay, to our colleagues, have a look at those one. And of course, it speed up quite extensively the process at the end to have some uh, a suitable solution, which is, of course, what is important for our company is to have relatively quickly, quickly uh, an efficient solution to a problem. Uh, about multi-scale modeling, I will keep a bit. I have two examples. Maybe uh, it depends on time. I still have two minutes. Okay, I should speed up. Uh, okay, right. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I haven't really finished now, but it's just for the uh, multiscape modeling about the transport productivity. Basically, uh, there is a code for uh, the, the resolution of the Boltzmann transport equation, which is developed inside IMEC, Impala, which is basically fed with uh, first principle calculation. And that's something that, of course, we can compute. Uh, it's not that easy, let's be realistic, but we are able to, to feed such kind of advanced model with our first principle calculation. And then thereafter, they are able to simulate a real device for the, the transfer of heat inside the system, so, which is a bit uh, interesting. And then, yeah, um, there is also, this is just another example, which is like the, uh, for a magnetic uh, junction where basically, they grow a system and when you come, find the, the experimentalist comes and say, okay, I have this kind of stack. They present you this kind of things, which is extremely beautiful. But at the end, if you try to investigate this material atomistically, if I could say like this, you have at the end something which is much different. Uh, so this is just to show a collaboration with different simulation group inside IMEC, where basically we are were mainly involved in this first part, so the atomistic description. But then there is another part which is related to transport, where basically we feed them with uh, uh, the structure. And you can see that when you look at the TMR, which is basically the difference in terms of resistance between the anti-parallel and the parallel configuration divided by the resistance of the parallel configuration, having something which is perfectly epitaxially grown leads you to an order of magnitude in terms of TMR. And more importantly, when we move to either uh, the next step, so this is this was the investigation of the magnetization system switching inside the system, compared to the ideal configuration, which is a bit small, I guess, on the right, but basically you have a front of magnetization that propagates into the system. We observe that if you have something which is uh, the atomistic vision, which is on the right, on the right with the animation, you have the evolution, which is really uh, really different. And so uh, with those examples, I hope that I showed you a bit uh, what actually, in terms of a semiconductor company, I cannot say for all the companies where there's first principle calculations that are involved, basically what we are asked to and uh, what are the objectives for first principle calculation from the important view. And on to that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Thank you very much, Benoit. It was very interesting. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so uh, during uh, all your talk, you didn't mention any code. Do you use Abinet? Ah, that's a good question. So basically for the example that I should, there is a question of confidentiality. So I cannot speak about all the projects that are ongoing. Um, but there are some projects where Abinet have been uh, used and compared to other code. But uh, of course, it's the, there is no, uh, there is one philosophy at least that I make. I, not, I cannot speak for every company, but if the software is free, it's what is important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, thank you. And for the electron phonon, for example, uh, for the so it's we we looked at metals. Of course, if the implementation uh, it was a question of timing, but uh, the electron phonon implementation of abini, in abinit, which do not require one year, is something that we would love to have, but uh, which was not available yet when the project started. It started before, like a long time ago. I was not even at IMEC uh, when the project started. So. Okay. This is also a question of that.